Okay, welcome everybody to our January Vibrant Conversation on, and we're focusing on the topic of positive self-talk in the practice room today. So this is a topic that I mentioned to most of my students, a lot of the posts that I make for my study group and blog posts and things like that, they end up going to this topic of positive self-talk in the practice room, talking kindly to yourself about your playing and about what you're trying to do. So um, this all started years and years ago as I was teaching and my students would show up to a lesson they still do this today. It's something that new students do often. They show up, they're getting their violin out. I'm asking them how things went for the week. And they're like, oh, I sound terrible. And my piece is going to be terrible. And everything's horrible. Like they're just like already setting up their expectations basically as being horrible. They sound bad. They can't play in tune, like all of these negative things. And they just put them all out on the plate before they've even gotten their violin out of the case. They've thought they have basically shot themselves in the foot before they've even played a single note for me. And so that is what they've set their expectations to sound horrible. And so most of the time they deliver what they expect of themselves and they do not play well <laughs> for their lesson. And I think that the main reason for that is because it's what they expected. It's how they're viewing their playing, their practice and what they can do with the instrument. So um, my encouragement, I usually interrupt them and I'm like, you need to, you know, reshape your frame of mind and um, enjoy where you're at in the journey right now <laughs> and it, what you can do already and give yourself credit for even practicing all week and showing up for a violin lesson or even signing up to start learning this crazy instrument in the first place because it's a challenge. Um, so anyways, I think that in the practice room, it's important to take time to praise yourself. So when you play a passage well, don't just start over and do it again or move on to the next thing. Like you need to take a minute to celebrate that, to compliment yourself on a job well done. If you're trying to reach a shift and you shift and you miss it. It's not okay to be like, I missed it, darn it. That's negativity. And instead of that, if you go for a shift and you miss it, you say something to yourself to the effect of, I can do better than that so that you can try again. Um, Cause that's, a, that's putting it in a positive light. Also, if you do that shift and you actually land on it once and, and you know every time you miss it you're grimacing or you know criticizing yourself for missing that shift but then when you land on it you're just like there finally and you move on and you don't take time for like a mini celebration you're missing out on a powerful tool in the practice room so when you land on that shift take time to smile to jump up and down a little bit to uh, I, whatever works for you just be like yes i did it whatever but you just have to take a second to acknowledge that that was what you wanted and you will be surprised how much um, that makes it so that you can when you go for that shift again it's like you've ignited the inner um the inner workings of yourself. I, I don't know how, what to call it, but you will more than likely hit that again because you want to get that praise from yourself again. It's similar to what happens in a violin lesson. When you get something right and your teacher notices and your teacher celebrates what you accomplished, then you go home inspired to do more because of that celebration stuff. And you can give that to yourself at home in the practice room. Okay, moving on to another idea along these lines is always talk about your own playing as kindly as you talk to others about their playing. So I talk about this a lot in my study group because someone will post 
a video of their practice and they'll say, I'm sorry, everybody, it sounds bad and I didn't do a good job and I missed all these shifts and, you know, they're talking really bad about their playing. But then they'll go comment on somebody else's practice video of similar um, quality, I guess we'll say. And they say, you're doing such a good job and you can keep doing it better. And I can see progress from the last video you posted and all of these positive things. And that's what you need to give to yourself. Notice the stuff, and it's hard to notice it in ourselves, but we wanna notice the stuff we're doing better um, and give ourselves credit for it and be nice to ourselves. Maybe even nicer to ourselves than we are to somebody else. So where, you know, you hear somebody else play, usually <laughs> you're not going, oh my goodness, I can't believe they posted this video. They sound so bad. Like we don't, we don't as violinists together that we know what it takes to make a video like that. We're probably not saying that. Usually we're, we know, we understand how hard it is. We understand what it takes to be able to do whatever we're hearing. And we have, we're sympathetic basically. And we need to have that sympathy for ourselves too. And um, talk nicely to yourself about how you play. Yeah, we're our worst in, or, uh, not enemy, but <laughs> we're our worst critic. We are. We are, we are, and we always will be. Um, but I think if we learn to do this well, we can turn that around to be positive. It's really hard. It's, it's a challenge. It's really a challenge. <laughs> yes, it is indeed. <laughs> And that kind of brings me into the, the next thing I was going to mention about when you're practicing to frame your objectives that you're working on in a positive and actionable light. So what I mean by this is um, if you are bowing crooked and you want to practice bowing straight, instead of saying, I'm not going to bow crooked, that's negative. And it's very simple to change that over to say, I can bow straight and then walk, you know, try to bow straight. That's, that's a simple example of it. Same thing with shifting. Um, instead of um, saying something like, it's going to be out of tune, and you're expecting it to be out of tune, telling yourself, yes, I can make this shift. Um, just giving yourself hope instead of you know giving it a negative thing that makes you feel like you're never going to succeed can i add something to this yeah please do i think that it's using positive affirmations to um i guess to attract positive energy into what you're actually doing um that's the way i that's the way i think of it if that makes, does that make sense? Definitely, yes. Positive, yeah. af pos positive affirmations are a really, really good tool. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And having a, uh, and it's hard to do, especially these days, but having a positive mindset um, that what you're going to sit down to do is only adding to the overall effort of doing better so you know, that's just that's how I look at it I don't know if that helps anybody <laughs> yeah thank you for adding yes does anybody else have anything to add at this point yeah go ahead Ann oh I <laughs> I'm going to be contrary, so if you don't want me to, you can you can shut me up or cut me out. <laughs> Go for it. Let's see what you got. <laughs> Let her rip, Aiden. Let her rip. <laughs> no, I think um, my my uh, idea is to look at how things are, to to notice what is, and not. Um, like uh, 
beat myself up about what is not as I would want it to be, but also uh, not to be like just positive. I mean, that's, uh, I, I, I don't, that, that kind of strikes me as not helpful. So, I mean, take, taking your example, if uh, someone posts something, okay, of course, there will be things that we notice that are not right, right? But or that that could be better. Or but uh, if if you give some kind of of feedback, you notice what is good, and maybe you 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 take something out that where you see it could be be helpful, right? So you, you maybe give some kind of, of hint or tip or question even and see, well, uh, I, I notice this and this. Why do you think is that so? I don't know. So so something something constructive, but of course it's not our jobs to kind of give a complete uh, critique of <laughs> whatever happened, right? So that that's different. When, when we talk to someone else and when we talk to to ourselves, right? So I think um, it's uh, really important also to notice what's uh, what's happening and to to kind of find some way of making it better or making I don't know work working with it or finding out why it is the way it is and what we can do and. What I find really challenging is that I'm surrounded by so much wonderful music that it's very hard to be content with what I what I do. Even if I don't beat myself up about what it is, I still like go down the road of well, I don't know if that is worth it. Maybe I should stop <laughs> whatever I should spend my time <laughs> with something <laughs> more worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> something that I can maybe I have more more aptitude for also I don't know <laughs> so these these are the, the the hard questions for me so okay mm -hmm. yeah and I think I know exactly what you mean by that you know we do have to acknowledge that there's room for improvement or we're never gonna work on anything right I think that my point with all of the positive side is to frame the the things that need improvement instead of saying i'm never going to get this or um even like just my plane sounds terrible like saying things like that is not helpful um where you know if if something sounds terrible you look at what it is that's going to improve that and it's um focusing on something you can do about it basically um rather than focusing on yes you have to acknowledge that there's a problem <laughs> or nothing's going to change um but um try to talk to yourself about it in a way that you have hope that you can change it that you can make it better i don't know if that i don't know i don't know that we're contradicting each other am <laughs> So what I find, uh, I, I try to avoid to evaluate, like, I mean, even to call something like bad or, or not bad or good or something, just maybe notice, uh, well, this is um, sounding flat or I don't like the articulation, I would like it to be more lively or more quiet or <laughs> whatever. So <laughs> then, um, I think that's um, sometimes I feel like then I'm not challenge, challenging myself because in a way I'm always content with where I where I am. <laughs> but <laughs> so so yeah, that that's the um, for for me that's a difficult thing not to get too too ambitious or but also. I don't know, no ambition, no improvement either. So it's, it's really a tight, a right. tight walk, right? Right, right. And I don't, you know, I don't encourage, like sometimes you see people that um, somebody plays really poorly or something and they're just like 100% um, 
good job. You did good. You did great. There's nothing wrong, you know, whatever. Why would the person try to do better? Um, was someone going to say something? No, I'm sorry. It was my watch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Your watch is talking. Okay. Yeah, I triggered, um, I triggered it. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, so, you know, it, there is a balance. I guess that's probably really the, the key is that there's a balance. It's when we focus too much on the negative side, I would rather focus too much on the positive side. Obviously, there's going to be some, ne some negative. We have to have negative and positive for life to be meaningful or have any reason to it, right? Uh, and, and violin. Like, if there's no negative, the, like, it doesn't that. work. <laughs> so, um, anyways, I think that that was most of the things I had, I had jotted down. So we can open it up for discussion. I guess we kind of already did. But Andrew, did you have something? Yeah, I was just gonna say there's. I don't. I don't think there's really a. Uh, I mean, it, I don't think ambition and contentment are mutually exclusive at all. I mean, I can say that. It, it, you know, you can say you're happy with where you are, but want more. <laughs> But but yeah. like you'd like to do more in the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can be content and yet still have dreams to pursue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish. No, I was go for it. Well, I think it's it, it's it's healthy to be able to see both sides of it. You know, both the negative and the positive. Uh, <clears throat> when it gets unhealthy is when you stay in the negative mm -hmm. you know um you know it's kind of you, know, you know trying to find a balance is, it can be difficult but i think that you know like i said uh, by focusing or tipping the balance really um with more positivity or more uh, positive statements or positive mental comments um, I, I, I just feel like that that will bring you more positive. It's, does that make sense? I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I know what I'm trying to say. I know what I think in my head, but I'm, I'm having a hard time articulating it. Sorry. No, you're good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do really like the idea of just of these, of positive self-talk, getting the reward circuits going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a different level to all of this for each person. Um, it's an, it's an individual journey. All of it is. And, um, there's another aspect to it that or to learning violin. That's very important. And that is to be in a state where you can receive, uh, criticism or critique, I guess, um, in order to do better. If you can't listen to somebody tell you what needs to be better, how are you going to learn? And how are mm -hmm. you, how are you going to grow? So you have to be able to hear, I guess, negative things about your playing, but be able to accept that in a way that propels you forward, which is where, I guess that's why I would say like framing things in an actionable uh, perspective, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think, I think um, that's something that I've been learning now that I'm taking lessons again, like more formal than, I mean, I think the group for me and your teaching is, I consider this more like coaching and not like lesson because you don't tell me what to do, right? <laughs> but, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to have lessons is um, is really a little bit more intense in a sense. And um, I had lessons where I was just sitting there and saying, "Well, I I, I really don't want to hear it." And I think <laughs> yes. that, that is really not. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it was it was not kind of helping me and so I was feeling down about it or it was just overwhelming too too much or I didn't understand it and then I, I shut down in some sense but mm -hmm. so over the 
the last few, I don't know, weeks or months, um, I'm really going into the lesson and so I'm really curious what you would tell me. <laughs> so this idea yeah. of finding out something that I didn't find out for myself, I, I find that as a mindset that is really, I mean, it's it's even fun because I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And I think that probably a lot of times that the reason, because, you know, as a teacher, I have a little bit different perspective on what you've just said in that I see students come and I give and I give and I give to them and they get discouraged and maybe quit. Um, and, you know, it's like, it's uncomfortable and you have to get to know, you know, when you get a teacher, like, like you got your teacher, you have to learn how they say things, what their methods, what their, you know, what kind of technique do they have? What, what do they expect with posture? All these things that are different with every single teacher, at least a little bit different. Um, and I think it's an overwhelming process, no matter what teacher you start with. <laughs> yeah, so Daniel has something that I really <laughs> was very confused about because if, if I do something, then he sometimes says, since he says it's nearly like good and then now I know good means now I know what is happening and I can uh, have, yeah. it doesn't mean that I'm doing anything good so sure. now that I, I hear good and I, I also think yeah good I'm going to learn something mm -hmm. now it's, it's, that's his way of acknowledging that he learned <laughs> that, that, that was, was Persia landing on the piano oh <laughs> I don't think we heard it well, I think this brought up some good topics and uh, conversation. Um, and you won't, I, well, at least, Anne, you should know that I don't mind contradiction. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kind of joking because I felt. <laughs> yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't really mean that seriously. <laughs> anyway. Um, yes. Yeah. So I think with all these yeah I, but what i find challenging is uh, really to to find what i can do to solve some kind of problem or even notice what the problem is so mm -hmm. sure the videos are helping of course because um they are kind of uh, give me give me an outside view but uh, but still, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a real, <laughs> real general statement. <laughs> but that is what I, I find is more challenging, I think, with these mindset things of, uh, well, what do I think of myself? Okay, I can have up and downs. And I, I, I know what, uh, going back to, I don't know, the idea that this, mantra I have I am enough that is really I don't have to know anything I can just uh, accept that uh, I don't know and I don't I, I can't or something mm -hmm. but uh, then uh, where is the real work happening right? <laughs> so that's uh, that's the uh, I don't know that's I, I grapple with that every day that I <laughs> that I'm in the practice room. Is that really <laughs> helping, or is that really the right thing, or what am I not seeing? It's I don't know. It's mm -hmm. confusing. And I, I think circumstances too are, are make it. I think sometimes uh, I, I've noticed that lately I've had to think a lot more about mindset. I I think maybe it. Uh, kind of coming out of uh, out of a, about a year and a half with no orchestras and being back in orchestras I I feel like I'm, I'm having to to be conscious of my mindset again uh, because it you know I, there's this uh, temptation to compare to others that hasn't been there for that wasn't there for a year and a half because I wasn't playing in groups mm -hmm. and you know <laughs> and uh, well I'm back to uh, playing in orchestras again Mm -hmm. uh, so it, yeah it's a, so you know I noticed yeah uh just 
because uh, circumstances have changed a little, I'm suddenly having to think about mindset in ways that I haven't had to in a while and that it takes some getting used to. Sure. You haven't had as many outside eyes on your plane, probably. Yeah. Or at least, well, maybe, I don't know if you still post videos on social media, but, you know, it's different when it's on social media or in a group even versus someone that's in the same room with you. It's just a different. I noticed actually that as the, as I start in the, as, as, as I, we got into the fall and orchestra started up again, I felt actually more and more reluctant to post videos on social media for some reason. Maybe it's mm-hmm. because I was more conscious of the eyes on it. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and that might come from, you know, being heard more in person. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting observation, though. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you were getting enough from, you know, playing with others. You were satisfied and didn't feel the need for the virtual side. That could be part of it, too. You know, that's also true. But I, I think a uh, big part of it, too, is that uh, I think for the first time, I'm, I'm playing in two orchestras that both have really high standards. And so it there's a, a there's a bit more self-consciousness about playing but also you know it's maybe I'm just I just haven't been used to it for for a while just because of so much time away from orchestras mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I um <clears throat> I had to do some memory cleanup on my laptop a couple of weeks ago and I came across some videos they were awful. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Positive self-talk. something to say about hey, that. I know. I mean, I, I know it all goes together, but I'm sorry to say, but they were really pretty rotten. <laughs> well, but see, this is the thing. And here's a perfect example of what I, I got mean. better. This is what I mean when I talk about rephrasing things in a positive light. Instead of saying, those videos are awful, you could say, (laughs) I've come so far, you know? Right. You could change. It's a simple little switch, but it (laughs) changes how you feel about things. Yeah, it was. uh, Well, it was just, it was really eye-opening. I thought, you know, because I thought that, you know, then, well, that's pretty decent. That's good. Right. Well, that's something and something to be proud of, but wow. (laughs) Right. But the thing of it is, and I forgot who said this. I think it was Eddie, actually. The thing of it is, um, we're never going to arrive. Like, even the professionals have room to grow. They can, I mean, some of us are professionals, but (laughs) I'm talking about the people, you know, the top 10 violin players that there are. Mm -hmm they still have room to grow. And that's the joy of it is that there's always room to continue, continue growing as people, as musicians, you know, it just, there is no end. I think that's really important to recognize even in the beginning. Uh, I'm reminded of that quote from uh, Casals on practicing uh, three hours a day in his (laughs) nineties. And he was asked why he continued to practice three hours a day in his 90s and he said uh because i'm i think i'm seeing improvement <laughs> yeah i heard that i like that <laughs> yeah well i mean his life journey has not ended yet so why should he stop i guess i don't know yeah it's interesting though and how do you how do you continue that that's a topic for another day but how do you continue to have that drive when you're in your 90s <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think this has been a good discussion, opened up some good topics. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here for now.